Good morning. Today is September the 19th. I am producing an accounting screencast as I am in an on off site meeting and we are not able to have our live session. I'm going to be going over the steps um, in order for us to work together to be able to um, do the following things. You should be able to, at the end of this screencast, navigate to my formative assignment in Cengage Now. You will also be able to review the sections of the ebook and how they relate to the which business is best, applying the text, role of ethics, and future me assignments. I will be demonstrating access and some best practices for each of these particular assignments. As I had mentioned in previous screencasts from last week, we had technological difficulties in accessing our assignments. Therefore, your week two formative Cengage Now assignment um, has been, you are welcome to complete it in week three. You will see in your PACE chart that you do not have a week three formative Cengage Now assignment as demonstrated in your PACE chart. Week two, the Cengage Now, Week 2 Formative Assignment, Which Business is Best, Applying the Text, Business Assignment, Discussion Board Number 2, CPA Firms and Accounting Jobs, and this week, reviewing your pages in Chapter 1 eBook, looking and creating your role of ethics in accounting and business, watching the screencast of the Future Me Career Assignment, as well as completing the Future Me Career Exploration Assignment. These are the items that are will be on your activity report that will be sent out on September the 23rd. Um, those particular assignments that aren't completed by the 20th will appear as being late. You have a screencast within your Getting Started textbook and also how to buttons on how to access your Cengage formative assignments. I will not go through that process as it is available. When you do enter into your Cengage Now assignments, in order to reach those assignments, you will be clicking on assignments. Um, week one intro to Cengage is a video on how to utilize Cengage Now. And week two formative assignment, I'm going to select. Within each of the formative assignments, you will find the name of the actual assignment within your ebook when you click on those items. You will also find the ebook um, item where you can actually click through and see within your ebook exactly where the information that you're going to be utilizing is located. So, for example, you can find it directly in there. There is nothing wrong with you going into your assignment, clicking through and utilizing this resource to help you focus on where you need to be reading to help you complete the assignment. In addition, there are animated examples that go into detail on how to solve the assignment or at least give you hints on the best way to do so if for some reason the content is not helpful. Remember, as you are working on the assignment, there is a check my work button that you'll want to make sure that you check making sure you understand the concepts. Once you have completed all of the assignments that are located in your formative, uh, uh, formative assessment, you will find that all of the numbers will be blued out. At that point, when you've checked your work, you're satisfied, you understand what you have done, you will submit assignment for grading. If you are unable to complete all of the lessons that are inside your assignment at one sitting, please make sure you use the Save button before exiting the module. Our next step is going to review the sections of the ebook and how they relate to which business, which the other four assignments that are located in both Week 2 and Week 3. I have a PowerPoint. It does have two different screens on it because I'm unable to project a full PowerPoint because of my screencast software. So um, if you want to maintain looking at the right side of the screen, that is the uh, PowerPoint that I am focusing on now. Within your book, we're, we're going through in our sections in Chapter 1, the purpose of business and accounting. As most of you may already know from other classes or just from your general background knowledge, the objective of most businesses is to earn a profit.
The goal that we're going to be doing in accounting is obviously creating information systems that we can provide to internal and external users. Um, part of our assignments are going to be looking at this in different, in different components. Within your applying the text um, formative assessment, you're going to be looking through the ebook and understanding that there's different pieces of how to understand how a business functions. The first area is going to be the type of the business. There are three main types of businesses um, that we're going to be looking at. The first is service, for example, not only the examples I show on the screen, but a lawyer, a doctor, someone who is providing a service for use for a fee we'll be finding as we move through this book is when we're dealing with a service industry we're going to be using the revenue account called fees earned. The second type of business is called a merchandising business as you can see Walmart and Amazon but in your local city perhaps perhaps a gift store or perhaps a clothing store something where the the um, external user comes in purchases an item to actually remove from that store or online. The third type of business is what we call a manufacturing business. That is where inputs are produced within a particular business. They create a finished product that is then shipped out either to the consumer or to another wholesaler or another group of businesses that will resale to the end user. Within your, within your e-text, when we talk about types of businesses, another area we're going to be focusing in in the applying the text is the form of that business takes. We have four different forms of businesses. We have proprietorship, for example, your local business that someone decides to open on their own. They are, um, as, as documented here, completely responsible for all uh, manners of that business. The other form of business is called a partnership. Again, we're dealing with complete, um, complete liability. However, you're at least sharing it with another person or a couple of people. But again, it's equal. The third type of business is the corporation. In this particular form of business, your individual has no longer become completely liable for the business. In fact, because they have uh, drafted together and have organized um, into a separate legal entity, if something occurs to that business, they will not be personally responsible. That corporation now has its own set of, set of um, entity, legal entity, meaning you can sue the business rather than the individual the individual owners at that point. And lastly, the last form is called a limited liability company, which is wonderful in the sense that you're now having the benefit of having more than one person. However, you're also having that liability issue removed from you because the LLC allows the business to be its own separate entity also. Um, and it, again, gives a little bit more protection to the owner. as part of the applying the text and which business is best, the other part of understanding through um, the, the areas of applying the text is what the role of accounting in business is. The biggest part to understand is accounting is truly an information um, system where you are producing financial and economic data regarding a business and getting it to those individuals that need it. A major part of the information system of accounting is determining who the internal and external users are. You will find this area of applying the text for your area of the business that you choose um, needing to be able to differentiate your internal and your external users. Internal are going to be your managers and your employees. Um, external are going to be those investors which can include the individual who owns the business or has placed money into the business. It's important for you to understand the difference between a manager and an owner. Also creditors. These are the individuals that loan the business money. That can be banks, uh, that can be other investors, um, as your text explains. External are also the customers. 
the individuals who come and use that business for different things. And lastly, the government. The government has to um, give the rules, regulations, as well as taxing requirements to the business. So when you're applying the tax, it's extremely important for you to, when you select your business, to really think about who are the true internal customers for this business. For example, if you choose a local pharmacy, who are those internal individuals? Think about the pharmacy, think about the people who work there. You need to kind of name those, uh, not, not obviously individual people, but you need to make sure that you are, you know, trying to personalize your instructions um, on that assignment. Same thing on external. When we talk about investors, who does that particular pharmacy or business you've chosen probably get their, um, their additional capital from? Now, obviously, you are not a mind reader. You don't really know, but looking on that website, uh, knowing what you know about that particular business you've chosen in your geographic location, um, give a good guess, kind of show that you're thinking about it. Who are the customers who go to that business? Who are some of the suppliers that may be bringing those items that that business is using to sell or market? And lastly, what is the specific government entity of that business that you have chosen? If you've chosen a business in Fond du Lac, who are the different government entities that that Fond du Lac business must um, submit to? You need to go ahead and, and think about that and be specific. We're talking about city, county, etc. Be specific in your applying the tax questions. Now, regarding the which business is best, that particular information is going to be coming directly out of the form of business. This is where you're going to do a little bit of research in the ebook, possibly any Googling that you need to get some more better understanding or some of the study tools within the e-text to be able to tell these friends what kind of business they need to choose to create. Again, they want to build a business, they just don't know which of the four types they should suggest. In that particular assignment, you need to make sure that you're giving them specific instructions as to which form based on the information you know about the type of business, service, merchandising, manufacturing. So at this point in the screencast, um, we have covered the th these three particular assignments, Cengage formative assignment, which business is best, and applying the text. I'd like to move now to the additional assignments that we have. In your discussion board in this particular area, we've kind of learned about CPA for CPA firms within your business um, ebook. In your discussion board, talking about the big four accounting firms, that's referring within your ebook in which they're talking about opportunities for accountants. There are two types of accountants. We have public accountants. These are the individuals who on a fee basis are going in and providing services to other businesses. We also have private accounting. That means that individual business, say for example Walgreens, employs their own private accountants. These are individuals who are performing information systems for their users, but they are only responsible for the Walgreens company. Public accounting, you are responsible for any business that comes into your door. Um, the other part we want to talk about with public accounting, they've met a state education requirement and they are now certified public accountants. You can still have a CPA certification and work for a private company and be a private accountant with a CPA license. That's important differentiation to make. Your assignment for the discussion board is for you to look at, we have four separate big four accounting firms. These are the very large public accounting firms. Your job is to Google them and determine how close they are to your, actually, uh, your actual location. For example, you're going to actually Google these four, um, these four accounting firms, Deloitte, Price, Waterhouse, Coopers, Ernst & Young, and KPMG. Um, you're going to go ahead and tell us how close they are. You're also going to list their locations as far as they are. And you're also going to look within your area, geographical area, there are lots of accounting firms, not necessarily these big four. You probably have um, individuals you personally know that are part of a local accounting firm. I'd like you to explain that a little more in detail. I want you to list a couple of them by name 
find them, you know, again, you're Googling, you're finding whatever resources you can to show me within your region that you are looking and being more aware of the accounting firms in your area. Lastly, we're going to have you do a, re do a search on monster.com. All you're going to do is try to find an opening um, that kind of explains, hey, here's some accounting jobs that are open near me. Okay. Now I'm going to move on into our ethics, our ethics area there, and I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of information within the book, and I'm going to actually walk through the process. Your book makes mention to how the accounting industry has changed since 2002 when there were some major breaches of ethical behavior by many of um, accounting firms. Um, our Congress went together and was very dis disgusted and as were many of the uh, people of the United States with some of these behaviors and Sarbanes-Oxley which is an ethical regulations went into effect to kind of protect consumers or all the internal and external users of businesses. Remember, accounting is an information system. It is absolutely paramount that the accounting individuals are reporting accurate information so people can make decisions. They must make these these must make these produce these financial documents in an ethical manner. In your book, you're going to find you're going to find five businesses that are kind of the um, hallmarks of unethical business um, that occurred back in the uh, late 1990s and the early 2000s, in which the Sarbanes-Oxley Act was in initiated. Part of your ethics assignment is to research one of these five firms. You must only choose one of these five firms. As you can see in the assignment, it specifically says one of the ways to determine whether or not an a, a, a unethical decision was made was, was there an intent to deceive? And you're going to find in all five of these businesses, the answer is yes. Your job in this assignment is to determine the what, the whys, and the whos. Now, in this area, I want to show you, you can click on the ethics assignment instructions you click through that, it's again going to give you the five businesses. I'm also going to mention I'd like you to use a citation generator. What that means, and there is a screencast that shows you how to use BibMe, you can use your own citation generator, is we want you to be able to show us where you learn this information outside of the book. The questions of each uh, paragraphs for each are what deception was involved in the case. You're going to have to determine that from kind of Googling and finding good credible sources to help you with that. Um, who made the decisions? At this time there's enough uh, history behind it that you're going to have actual names of executives and individuals within that company that made those unethical choices. Which information users were used? Remember you have external and internal information users. I need you to be specific who is being who is, who is being misled. And lastly, if you had worked at this company and was asked to participate in the activity at the time, not now, not looking, not looking backwards, almost uh, 20 years, but looking at the time if you were asked as an accountant, what would you have done? This is just your assignment here that tells you um, how things are going. I want to make a very clear um, differentiation. Remember, Sarbanes-Oxley was passed in 2002. When you begin looking for sources, if you are seeing sources that have been written after 2002, make absolutely sure that they are referring to the unethical behavior that occurred during that time. A lot of these businesses, um, HealthSouth is still out there, um, Xerox is still out there, um, a couple of them are no longer out there, but the ones that are current, make sure you're reading closely and you're, and you're referring to the events of that period of time. Now I'm going to go ahead and also show you the other assignment. This is the actual document you're going to be typing on, Ethics Gathering Grid. As always, when you're using a Google document, you must be signed into Gmail before you can access this information. You're also going to make 
a copy and create it with your last name. This gathering grid gives you an opportunity to, gra to be able to com com understand what you're doing. Here are your questions. I'm wanting you to use three sources. I've used them here up here that you can replace and tell me what the sources are. You do not have to fill out every single square. In question one, perhaps only one source is helping you. You do not have to complete all three. You must make sure that all three sources have been used. You're going to actually type on this document. Um, you're going to, once you've used this gathering grid, if you choose, it's a way to kind of help you make sure that you've used all three sources accurately and that information has come from all three sources. You are going to transform those into the three paragraph narrative below. Lastly, you're going to use your favorite citation generator. As I mentioned before, there is a screencast specifically showing you how to use BibMe. I would like you to utilize that. You are placing your sources in there and it will create a nice work cited that you can copy and paste in this document. Also with Google, you need to remember you need to click it and you need to change the settings once you make a copy in order for you anyone to be able to view. You will take the URL, you will place it in box two of the assignment. Lastly is the Future Me Accounting Careers. Um, there is a website from the American Institute for Certified Public Accountants, AICPA, which has a really fun website that kind of helps you start the, the um, exploration process in accounting. Um, what I have here for you is you want to go ahead and answer the 10 questions on the Future Me website. Um, keep in mind, um, you are going to be placing the information in the box too. I'll go ahead and kind of show you really quick. If you click on this link, okay. you're going to have 10 questions right here. Um, they're kind of fun questions. They're asking you kind of your style. You're going to click and continue on. Um, when you get to the end of the 10, and I'm going to really, I'm going to do this really fast, so please don't pay it. You, you, want, you want to just answer it the way you want to. I'm going to go on and I'm just going to click through as fast as possible. That is not what I want you to do. I would obviously want you to take some thought into how to do this. <clears throat> you do need to type your name on the business card and choose the one that you like. Okay, keep on going. Okay, and during this question here, make sure you talk about some interests. You need to go ahead and choose three interests. Again, I'm going to go ahead and just randomly do this just to show you. Okay, and at the end, you're going to have kind of a real-world accounting opportunity. For example, with my choices that I randomly made, again, please be a little more thoughtful, 